Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for July 4th, 2016. This week, I want to talk about the risk that we perceive to exist in stocks. It's really not the stocks that are risky. It is you, the trader, that are risky. Because stocks can be volatile. That's the way they are. Lower cap stocks, you know, small cap penny stocks, tend to be more volatile. And so people tend to refer to those as riskier stocks. But it's really not the risk. Because you as a trader have uh, an ability to react to the volatility in different ways. You can control the size of your losses or you cannot. You can take positions that are too large for your risk tolerance or you can choose to size your positions responsibly. When you buy a 50 cent stock that has the capacity to be much more volatile on a percentage basis, you should really be taking a much smaller position size to reflect that volatility. If you're buying a $40 stock, they're just not gonna move as much up and down on a percentage basis, and so therefore, you can afford to buy a larger dollar position in those stocks. You determine the risk by how you trade the market and how you trade the volatility of the stock. All right, let's get into this week's analysis. Great comeback. There was the Brexit sell-off. There was Monday's follow-through. And last week, I suggested that we would probably see a bounce early in the week in the market, sometime in the first five days. It happened as I expected it would. Monday morning, right there, there was the bottom. I bought the XIV in here, and the market really shot up from that as all of the fear that came with the Brexit vote kind of got overdone, and the market has come back to basically where it was before it started. We're now at some resistance level Bob, from before the um, break. I expect stalls will, uh, stocks will stall there. You can see that they've stalled briefly. The more important resistance is up a little higher, and I think good chance we move up into that. But at this point, a little bit overbought because of the big move up over the last four days, and so you want to be a little bit cautious. You look on the longer-term chart of the S&P 500, and you can see that we're basically back to that resistance that is kept the market down for the last nine months or so. If we break through that 210 level roughly, then we can get up into here, but that's not tremendous upside, is it? Not a whole lot of upside to the next level of resistance. So the market is good, but it's really fighting against a lot of long-term resistance that's gonna keep the market down in the near term. Now on the small cap side, I see more upside potential. As we've talked about in past weeks, that downward trend line was broken. And now it looks like we can try to resume the upward trend, get through this resistance and then up into this one. So I think the upside potential on the small caps is better than on the large caps, but also still it has to deal with this resistance zone that we're having trouble getting through. And there's three of them here that you wanna keep an eye on. So better looking market on the small caps, but still has some things to fight through. Now the Canadian market has benefited from the comeback in the market in the US over the last little while because what people are recognizing is that the Brexit vote delays, likely delays, the raise of interest rates in the US. Well, if interest rates don't go up, then the US dollar stays weak, that helps commodity prices. And of course, the Canadian market is heavily dependent on commodities. And so we see here Monday morning, the break to the upside, nice little upward trend intact, probably gonna head up into here before it gets stuck little overbought to be chasing the Canadian market here. After all, it's been four good days in a row, but I would call this a bullish chart, just one to be a little bit cautious of. Now in the longer term time frame, we had an upward trend, a flag back, a flag pullback off of this high, and we're now breaking the flag this week. And that should lead to more upside in the, um, sorry, I got this stupid thing that pulls out here. Um, I've got a uh, nice upside in the market in the Canadian side because there's lots of room up to that long-term resistance. So I do like how the Canadian market looks better than the US large cap market. On the TSX Venture, nice long-term upward trend. We're in this upward sloping channel. Um, still good upside potential, risky in this market because we've been going up for so long, but although it's risky, it also has good upper momentum and you can't argue with momentum. So if you see individual stocks showing good chart patterns on the TSX Venture, they are worth considering. On the treasury bond side, of course, the delay in a raise of interest rates because of Brexit has caused 
the treasury bond market to spike higher. That means interest rates go lower and uh, we're in a nice upward trend here. A little bit overbought. You can see we're going a little bit parabolic into this resistance zone. And it's um, probably gonna stall uh, this week, I think. However, good strength here. That means interest rates go down. That's good for stocks and good for markets in general. US dollar, uh, again, Brexit vote, lower interest rates. I mean, the US dollar is coming off. It would had been going up. Now it's starting to pull back. I think it continues to pull back and kind of remains in this range for the next little while. On the gold side, we've had strength in gold. We had that breakout. If you remember back to when we had that breakout, I said market will probably pull back in the short term and then go higher. Well, it pulled back a little more than I liked, really flirted with that support zone, but now it has done that move higher and it should continue to move higher. But if you look at the individual gold mining stocks, so many of them have gone parabolic or in steep upward trends that it feels a little dangerous to chase them higher. I don't think there's a reason to sell them yet, but I do want you to be cautious with these things because we do have gold coming into all these resistance zones, which is gonna slow that upward move eventually. So for now, strong market, just be cautious with it. On the oil side, you know, the move here from the lows to where we are now, that's a 50% move. It doesn't look like much in the context of where we've come from, but that is a 50% gain in the price of oil, and it's been stalling the last four or five weeks. It needs to make a break out of that range to continue the upward trend. So for now, it's kind of a boring, complacent market, but I don't think you want to turn your back on it because it could start to come alive again. It could also break this upward trend line and spike lower. we got to watch for a move out of this low volatility that the oil market is in. Now here we see, this is the fear chart, the VXX, and here we see that pickup in action that we've had in the month of June. Lots of up and down. Right now it looks kind of weak and it looks like maybe the, the trade is over on the VIX. However, look back to last June. Uh, at the end of June, we had a spike higher and then it kind of went quiet again, but eventually it came alive in August. And so even though the market seems to be getting complacent again, the fear seems to be going away, I don't think you can expect that we can't get more volatility in the market. We certainly can. We could still see a big move up in volatility because there are so many risk factors out there. We shouldn't discount the fact that Brexit has happened. And although the market seems to have forgotten about it the last four days, it doesn't mean it won't start to rear some effect on the market in the near term. So the market has some risk factors that we have to be very watchful of. So I've got my ratings on US stocks to neutral on both time frames, mostly because we're just bumping up against resistance. There's some upward momentum there, but they're a bit overbought and hitting that resistance. On the um, Canadian stock side, I've actually got my ratings as bullish, but again, we've been going up for four or five days in a row, so that tells me um, we could get a little bit of a pullback in the short term, but the longer term chart is bullish. Short term chart has good upper momentum. Same thing on gold. It's a bullish chart on both time frames, but there's some risk there because of how much it's gone up in a short amount of time. And oil, neutral, we're stuck in a trading range right now. So we've had a great recovery from the Brexit sell-off this week, which has benefited the Canadian market more than the U.S. because of the effect of the weaker U.S. dollar on interest rates and, of course, on commodity prices. Look for the strength in U.S. stocks to slow as these indexes are hitting resistance. I think we could see money rotate into the small caps. Gold is strong, but it is overbought. Oil is stable, but it is boring. Fear is low, but the volatility could easily pick up sometime later this summer. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes. Remember to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Stock Scores. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can get instant updates when I upload a new video. Have a great week in the market and trade well.